Good afternoon, everybody. It's Mrs. King, and I'm here to work on you with the document, the 5.34 sound document, and read that aloud to you as I've, as I've been doing. So I'm going to put my name in, okay? And um, just to show you, I up here on my screen, I've got my Merriam-Webster Learner's Dictionary open, and I've got my Google open. All right, and just I'm going to scroll down because I just want to show you guys something else. You've got some uh, vocabulary words here in the document that you're going to notice Mr. Lynch wants you to review these key terms. So frequency, wavelength, reflection, refraction, and absorption. But I'd also recommend that you have some of your old documents open, um, some of the work that you've been turning in so that you can look up these words if you don't remember. Some of them you might remember, um, so you could just do them off the top of your head but some old documents um, might be a good reference for you as well to complete this assignment. Okay, so let me just scroll back up, um, looking at the agenda, look up the vocabulary words, read the text and take notes, watch a video and take notes, and then answer the questions, okay? So we've got a lot of different options for learning, okay? So um, as we've been doing the past couple of days, we have important new vocabulary words. We've got resonance, collide, pressure, compress, speaker, and alternating. So your first step on this work is going to be using your dictionary or Google to look up the meaning of these words and um, fill in the definitions. So I'm going to do the first one with you, okay? So I'm going to use my Merriam-Webster, my learner's dictionary. I've got the link open and I'm going to type that in, resonance, okay? And let's see, I see it's a noun, okay? And it says the quality of a sound that stays loud, clear, and deep for a long time. The resonance of the singer's voice. Okay, technical. This looks like it might be more of a physics type of definition. So let's see, a sound or vibration produced in one object that is caused by the sound or vibration produced in another. That definitely sounds like it's a physics type of definition. So I'm gonna go with something like that and put it in my own words. So I'm just gonna take a minute. How am I gonna put that in my own words? A sound produced by one object that causes sound in another object. Okay, I've got it. Here we go. A sound produced by one object that causes sound in another object. Okay, there we go. I didn't copy and paste. I looked at the definition. I put it in my own words and I put what I think makes sense here. Okay, I'll be honest with you. I'm not totally sure what that means yet, but I'm hoping by the end of our reading today, I'll have a much better idea. Okay, so you're going to go ahead and do that for the rest of your words. If you feel like Google works for you and you can make sense of it and put it in a physics related definition, you can certainly use that. Or my recommendation is a lot of times to use both of them and come up with your own definition. Okay. All right. So I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to start reading here. You're going to highlight the important bits and bullet points for key concepts and details. Okay. So here we go. You can see the water move in a water wave but sound waves are invisible. Sound is a wave because it has both frequency and wavelength. We also know sound is a wave because it does all the other things other waves do. Sound can be reflected, refracted, and absorbed. Sound also shows interference and diffraction. Resonance occurs with sound waves and is especially important in how instruments work. Ooh. Now we're late relating resonance to instruments. This word is certainly starting to make more sense to me, okay? So in this first box, we're gonna use the opportunity to review these key terms, summar summarize each one below in your own words. So frequency, I'm gonna say in my own words, how often a wave moves from one point to another, okay? That one I was able to do on my own. Okay, Ref wavelength, I'm gonna say the measurement of a wave from one point on the wave 
to the same point on the next wave after it. Okay, so it's kind of a long definition. You guys might have a way of simplifying it, but again, this one I was able to put off the top of my head. Now for reflection, I think I might need to look at my notes a little bit because I have an idea. I know reflection is something you see like in a mirror, but related to physics, I'd probably need to go back and look at my notes. So if I were you, I'd take some time to go ahead and do that. Okay, scrolling down, I'm gonna get to the next reading, okay? What is oscillating in a sound wave? Sound is a traveling oscillation of atoms. If you push on one atom, it pushes on its neighbor. That atom pushes on the next atom and so on. The push causes atoms to oscillate back and forth like tiny masses on springs. In liquids and solids, the oscillation or the vibration spread through the connections between atoms to make a sound wave. Because the atoms are closer together in a liquid than in a gas, sound waves travel faster in a liquid. And because the atoms in a solid are even closer together than in a liquid, sound travels fastest in a solid. Wow, a lot of information here, okay? So um, we're going to highlight, let's see. Sound is a traveling, traveling oscillation of atoms. I think that's really important to highlight that, okay? Oops. Um, I want it to be text, I need my highlighter, here we go. So I like this part, one atom pushes on its neighbor. Okay, I think that's important. Okay. Okay, another piece I really noticed down here, solids are closer together than in a liquid, sound travels faster than a solid. I think that's really important. I'm definitely highlighting that. Okay, so one thing to be careful of, I wouldn't highlight everything because then you're not really picking out the important information. This piece down here, I definitely noticed it, okay? So filling in our terms here, I noticed that um, oscillation has vibration next to it. So um, I'm gonna put that, and I'm gonna just clarify for myself a bit more. I'm seeing in my mind moving, sound waves. That's what I see when I read this, okay? Key phrase. Did you notice that Mr. Lin said um, I tell this phrase? I think that's definitely a key phrase, okay? And then important details. I would jot down things like, um, uh, let's see, Adams, are closest together in solids. I'm definitely getting that down. Sound travels fastest in a solid. I think that's definitely important, okay? So I'm getting that down. All right, I'm gonna move on from here. Now at this point, I'm gonna start doing more of the reading because you guys can fill this information um, on your own. I'm really trying to get the vocabulary for the reading for you, okay? So sound in air and gases. In air, the situation is different. Air molecules are spread far apart and interact by colliding with each other. The pressure is higher where atoms are close together and lower where they are farther apart. Imagine pushing the molecules on the left side of the picture below. You push, your push squeezes atoms together, creating a layer of higher pressure. That layer pushes on the next layer, which pushes on the next layer, and so on. The result is a traveling oscillation in pressure, which is a sound wave. Sound is a longitudinal wave because molecules are compressed in the same direction the wave travels. Okay. I would definitely highlight this piece. Just as a quick reminder, you should be highlighting here because that just keeps standing out. All right, we're going to go on. Notice here, Mr. Lynch wants you to summarize the information in the pictures and captures, use your own words, okay? 
So I see this picture here. I'm reading the italics. All right, air is made of molecules in constant random motion, bumping off each other in the walls of their container. So in air, molecules are constantly moving. That's definitely something I'm, I'm noticing. And look at how I put that right in my own words, okay? Next picture I see, high pressure, low pressure. What do you notice without even reading this? There's lots and lots of molecules here, less molecules here, okay? At the same temperature, high pressure means more molecules per unit volume. Low pressure means fewer molecules per unit volume. So I would make a little note about this picture. You can do that on your own, okay? Here we go, some more information. How does the picture above show how sound waves operate? Okay, so you've got high pressure, low pressure. As the, high, as the pressure, um, as the wave moves along, you've got a mixture of low pressure and, and um, high pressure. And I would notice that they keep um, interchanging. That's a great word for you to use. Low pressure, and high pressure waves keep interchanging as the sound wave moves. The frequency range of sound waves. Anything that vibrates creates sound waves as long as there is contact with other atoms. However, not all sounds can be heard. The oscillations we call sound waves cover a wide range of frequencies. Humans can hear only the narrow range between 20 hertz and 20,000 hertz. Bats can hear high frequency sounds between 40,000 and 100,000 hertz. Whales hear very low frequency sounds that are lower than 10 hertz. Okay, all really interesting. Sound and air pressure. If you touch the surface of the speaker, you can easily feel the vibration that creates a sound wave. Figure 21.9 below shows a magnified illustration of a speaker, a sound wave and the oscillation of air pressure. When your music is playing, the surface of the speaker moves back and forth at the same frequencies as the sound waves. The back and forth motion of the speaker creates a traveling sound wave of alternating high and low air pressure. Oh, that reminds me of the picture that we saw above. That makes a lot of sense in words to me now. Okay, here we go. So we've got a picture of a speaker cone, atoms, high pressure, low pressure. Okay, and again, I would read the italics here what a sound wave might look like if you could see the atoms. The effect is greatly exaggerated to show the variation. So again, look at how close they are together and then spaced and then close together and spaced again, okay? There's a video link for you to look at, okay? So again, remember you can um, turn down the speed of it if you wanna have it go a little bit slower. You could also pause it and take some notes. And I recommend doing that dual screen here as well. Show the video right next to your screen, okay? I've been showing you that the past couple of days. Then you've got some questions to answer, okay? So you've got some words to fill in, okay? Um, notice Mr. Lynch didn't put the um, word bank here, but I'll give you a quick hint. Solid, liquid, and gas are three words to use to fill in this. And you've got a couple more questions. And once you finish that, you'll be all set. You can turn in that work, okay? So just a reminder, if you need any help, please feel free to reach out to Mr. Lynch or myself. Um, I'm happy to do individual Google Hangouts if you need to. If you just wanna walk through some of this with another person like me, I'm happy to help, okay? Have a great day, guys. Bye.